Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Legends of Sport podcast. I'm your host, Andy Bernstein. This week's episode is with a fellow veteran of covering the NBA, David Aldridge. A native of the Washington, D.C. area, David got his start at American University and then at the Washington Post, where he covered all sports. We became friends during the 1992 Dream Team era and have been in the trenches together for so many amazing NBA moments over the years. David moved to in front of the camera, first with ESPN, then TNT, and now is a senior columnist for The Athletic. In addition to sharing so many NBA memories together, David and I are also recipients of the prestigious Kurt Gowdy Award for Media from the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. So great catching up with DA as this 22-23 NBA season is about to start. David shares some of his thoughts about that, as well as how his career started and progressed, and a bonus of some wonderful and personal memories with the Mamba himself, Kobe Bryant. So enjoy this episode with the Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, and as always, I'll see you on the backside. I got to welcome my good friend David Aldridge to the Legends of Sport podcast, fellow Kurt Gowdy Award winner. You got <laughs> 2016, right? I was following yes, your yes. footsteps, 2018. There you go. <laughs> well yeah. deserved, by the way. Uh, uh, your part, too, man. I was thrilled when I was there and, and you got the award. You made a great speech, too, as I remember. Um, so, DA, um, we're on the cusp of the NBA season starting. And... Uh, Legends of Sport, we don't really get into like what's happening in the news or on the sports page like at the moment, but mm -hmm. I'm going to make the exception with you because um, I'm so happy to, to be able to talk to you as the season is about to kick off. But before we get into all of that stuff, all right, what we always like to do here is is go back in time, see how the guest became who he is, who, he, who she is, um, mm -hmm. what influenced you, who influenced you, where the bug got started. So can we, can we go back in uh, – in a time capsule in your life and career, David, um, you know, you born, raised in Washington, DC, right. You ended up going to American university. Um, yep. they have, you have a deep love for that area. Um, give me an idea when the journalism bug started for you. Cause I know when it started for me in high school, but how about for you? Well, I, I think in the abstract, probably, um, you know, growing up in DC in the early 1970s, Every day you heard about this thing called Watergate and these two reporters named Woodward and Bernstein. <laughs> Unrelated, right? and, of course. Yeah. Even though you didn't think about that as maybe your life's calling, they were always in the background. Like every day hmm. you would eat. Well, I would because it was weird, but I, I would read the post. And, you know, even if I didn't really understand everything that was going on, you just wanted yeah. to kind of be in the loop and be informed and mm -hmm. um, and and. Just having that kind of daily presence of of journalism in your home every day kind of went, wow, that's that sounds like that's kind of fun. You know, like they seem like they really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but really not until high school, I think, is is in reality. I had a very, um, very good uh, advisor. We had a we had a paper in high school. It wasn't didn't come out very often, but but we had an advisor, um, my English teacher, Mr. Carroll, who was very um, influential in telling me that this was, you know, you should think about this as a potential career. This is something you might be able to do because mm -hmm. I wrote a couple of really, really bad stories, but <laughs> I think he was trying to be nice, but maybe he saw something, I don't know, um, but he mm -hmm. was very complimentary and, and kept me at it and, and pushed me to continue to write and, and to be a, a contributor in that. And I did. And I really started to like that process um, through the school paper and a couple other publications. And while I was in high school, I really started to like it, you know, and so I was like, wow, this is something I could do. Um, and then when I went to American, uh, you know, they had a very good school paper and, you know, I jumped right in and, really all four years was was someone who was a big part of that. I got to be editor my junior year, and that was a huge um, mm -hmm. step up for me um, in terms mm -hmm. of confidence and, and really thinking, well, you know, once you get that and you realize you, you're you able to help put a paper out every week, um, it made me feel like I really could do this for a living. And so that mm -hmm. after that, I, re I really did kind of lean into being a reporter. Um, 
certainly back then, Andy, you remember it was print was the dominant yeah. uh, medium. Yeah. And so everybody wanted to get a job at a newspaper somewhere. Uh -huh. um, and um, I was fortunate enough through a lot of different, a lot of different reasons and, and circumstances to get a job at the Post, Washington Post, and, and work there for nine years. And, and really, it was a wonderful, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a, a group that is I'll put up against anybody in terms of journalism and writing and, and excellence. Mm -hmm. um, beat writers and columnists and feature writers and investigative. I mean, everybody in the section was a heavy hitter, was mm -hmm. was at the top of their game. And as a young reporter, you know, having those those people to kind of learn from was mm -hmm. was like going to grad school. Um, and it was just it was it was an amazing experience. And that kind of that's kind of what happened. I mean, it was yeah. I, 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 I tell people I was lucky, but I was also ready. Yeah, um, yeah. when the opportunity came. Yeah, there you go. H how does it work as a writer? I mean, as a photographer, I know that, uh, you know, most of the time in a newspaper, it's still, you, you have to intern for a while. Yeah. Y you have to show um, a breadth of work, you know, not just one thing, sports or news or feature or whatever. Um, is it the same thing with a writer? You would have to submit stories as sort of on spec or how, how does that work? How do you, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. You yeah. know, I interned at the post after I graduated from college, they have, they have a summer, they still do a summer internship program mm -hmm. um, in all of the different sections. They usually bring in a couple of, of college students mm -hmm. um, to work as interns all summer. And the great thing about the post, uh, one of the great things about the post in terms of internship programs is that I, I had lots of friends around the country who were, who had internships and it was basically answering the phones and getting coffee and they weren't really they might tag along on the story but they didn't really get to do very much you know and i remember literally i think it was like my second day of the internship my boss george solomon said oh by the way you're covering the orioles tonight <laughs> you know <laughs> it's so matter of factly like yeah. you know and it was like, I am? He was like, yeah, you are. And so they throw you in. They guess they want you to sink or swim. And and you have to learn really quickly. Yeah. Uh, you, you find out really quickly, I should say, yeah. if you can do this or not. And um, uh, fortunately, I guess I showed enough that they that they hired me full time afterward. That's amazing, man. I mean, I know that it's like an old boys network, especially a newsroom, yeah. especially a newsroom uh, of a paper of that caliber. Um and it's tough to break in, man. So you, you obviously made an impression. Um, so why sports for you? Why sports and not news, politics, whatever? How come? Well, the funny thing is when I was at AU, I, I almost never covered sports. I wrote, you know, a couple hundred stories, but I was always writing about the university senate or the, you know, the student government. I, I never wrote about sports. So I didn't think I was going to. If I got a job as a reporter, I thought, pretty much through my junior year, it would be a news, you know, news side, um, yeah. which would have been fine. Um, the the thing that kind of changed everything is that um, one of my buddies at the paper at AU also was a part-timer, had gotten a part-time job at the Post in sports, covering sports. And it was, yeah. it was agate and it was doing high schools and stuff like that. Um, and the the high school sports editor or one of the two high school sports editors at the time was an AU graduate named Mike Trilling and he tried to help AU kids out whenever he could and and I called him and and he literally said you know well we'll find something for you to do if you want to come down here we'll 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 put you on something you know and it, you could do that back in those days you know yeah, right. and so I that's how I kind of got into sports I just kind of covered high school sports my senior yeah. year of college. Uh, I was a part-timer at the Stringer at the Post. Basically, you get you know, $50 a story, something yeah. like that. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, that's, that's how you do it. You got to get the, yeah. toe, the toe in the in the water somehow. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's awesome. So it was great. It was a great yeah. experience. It was good. And then that kind of got me into, and then the internship the following year, the following summer was in sports. So that really kind of set me on the sports path. Sure. Did you play sports as a kid? <laughs> God, I was the worst athlete in the world. <laughs> I, yeah. I stunk at everything. I wasn't any good at anything. I tried, yeah, to, play you and me both, I tried to play baseball. I was yeah. not any good at anything. That's when I realized I'm going to be an observer rather than a participant. So. <laughs> I mean, I, I love sports. I, I, my dream was to become the next Bud Harrelson, you know. I, yeah. I yeah. love the Mets and I did 69 mm -hmm. Mets. You know, when I was 11 years old, it was the greatest thing to ever happen, you know. 
but I, I knew that at four foot 10 going into the ninth grade, wow. <laughs> there was no chance I was playing any professional. Right, right, Although I right. love playing and I love playing pickup stuff in, in Brooklyn on the street and yeah. the playground. And then I love photography. So I kind of married the two passions together, you there know, you but it, it's interesting to hear that you, um, just like I did. I mean, when I was in college, uh, you know, I was shooting everything else too. I mean, all the fine art stuff and the yeah, yeah. sorority and fraternity parties and the politics. And even we had presidential candidates who came through our campus at right. UMass when I was there. So, but it was sports that really got the juices flowing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying, I was trying to remember when you and I probably first met and I know we both were at the Barcelona Olympics in 90s. Yes. Right. So you were working yeah. for the post at that point. I was at the post. Right. Right. And it could have, could have been during that whole thing. Did you cover the dream team throughout? Like through. I did. It, the I, with, the, with the note, with the one exception of Monaco, uh, yeah. uh, Monte Carlo, where Will yeah. big time me and <laughs> That's it. I'll be covering that. <laughs> really, that is a big type move for sure. Which yeah. was fine, but I covered everything else. The tournament of the Americas in Portland. Yeah. And that's the probably where you and I. Yeah, everything. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. So I'm what sure it was probably during that time, you know, yeah. covering them or, you know, I covered the Bullets for five years. So mm -hmm. I was around the NBA. I covered that game. I'm sure you were, you were there when Magic hit that 30 foot, like, push hook shot at the end yeah. of regulation to send the game into overtime, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, it was, yeah. So I was around that, uh, around the NBA pretty yeah. regularly at that time. So yeah, the, the, that remains kind of the pinnacle of, to me, uh, mm -hmm. for my career was mm -hmm. covering that, covering the dream team. Cause I, you know, nobody had ever seen anything like it and they somehow lived up to the expectations yeah. and for them. Yeah. And it was, it was great fun. And it was a lot easier to get close to them those days, yes. right? I mean, yes. the layers that you had to go through were minimal. Right. And you're working with great people, you know, with Brian McIntyre, Terry Lyons, Craig Miller, those guys, yeah. you know, yeah. who who were really helpful and wonderful. I mean, these are all my friends that you've worked with for years as well. Sure, sure. I yeah, mean, no, it was great. It was great. Changed, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just I just watched last night. My wife and I watched the Redeem Team. Doctor. I got to see that. I hear it's it, great. It's, it's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, how, how involved were you with that uh, coverage in 2008 of that team? I did. I was not, uh, I was not, I didn't go. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think, was I, I was probably still in that. I had this hybrid. Uh, well, I mm -hmm. had, I was working two jobs basically at, at yeah. that time. So I was working in Philly at the Inquirer. Right. And right. I was also working for Turner. I just started working for Turner. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think, so I know I didn't cover that. I covered London in 2012 and I covered, uh -huh. part, and I covered, uh, uh, Brazil in, in 2016. Yeah. So, yeah, I got uh, you. Well, I want to talk about that Turner sort of transition and yep. how that came about, because all of a sudden I start seeing you and all of my other friends who are writers, you know, in yeah. front of the camera, you know, I'm seeing yeah. you, I'm seeing Mark Stein, Howard Beck, Mark Spears, you know, my local sure. friends in LA, um, it became like the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, how did that happen for you? Tell me, like, what was the catalyst that put you in front of the camera? Well, we have to go back to my job before Turner, which was with ESPN. So. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, when when I got to, I got uh, I left the post in '96 to go to work for ESPN. Um, right, they cold called me out of the blue. Um, mm -hmm said that they were looking for somebody to cover the NBA full time. And I was actually covering what was then the Redskins, but um, mm -hmm. at the time, um, but they knew I had covered the NBA for five years beforehand and I covered the Olympics. So yeah, um, I, I thought I could jump in. Mm -hmm. um, and that was at the point in time, as you mentioned, where TV networks, um, ESPN being one of them, were hiring print reporters for their expertise, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the the idea being that we can teach you how to be on television, but we, we're hiring you for your knowledge and, and what you know and your ability to break stories and to be reporters, to be, actually cover these sports in much more than just the score, the final score, you know, some feature it, in some depth yeah. to be able to, to do reports on what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So they hired me to do that. Um, you know, they had hired Peter Gammons from the Boston Globe to cover baseball for him. Chris Mortensen had worked at, at the Atlanta Journal Constitution. They hired him to do be their NFL guy. Right. So they were doing that throughout their, their their company. And I was there. I was the NBA guy. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how I got started 
um, in front of the camera full time. I didn't, I had done a little local television show, but nothing like ESPN. And wow, what an education. I mean, just working with some great producers who really taught me the business and, and how to do it well and to, how collaborative television has to be by definition. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause yeah. you know, when you're a writer, Andy, you're, it's all about everything under your name, right? Like everything under your name is what you wrote, right? So right. you're, right. you're, you get really focused on that, but TV, but has to be collaborative for it to have any chance to work. If the, if the shooter, the camera person says, you got to take, do that again, you got to do it again. You know, yeah. like you can't argue with them. They know better than you do. Except um, if you're live. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's so got to be nerve wracking. Yeah. To listen to the listen to the sound guy, listen to the cameraman, listen to the producer, and, and they knew what they were doing and, yeah. and tried to work with them as opposed to, you know, being a big shot and, and trying to lord it over them. So it, it was great. It was great to be in right. that environment. Um, and it really taught me how to be in front of TV. So I, when yeah. I, yeah. so then I went to Turner and, and it was a great tra easy transition for me. And Turner is, I've said this to many people because it's true. It's the best place I've ever worked. It yeah, was, yeah. was, it was phenomenal for yeah. 14 years. It was great. That's amazing. Um, you know, my, my experience uh, was, you know, I, I never in a million years thought I'd be in front of the camera. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I've told this story a couple of times, but I don't think I ever told you. So, you know, the Lakers signed this gazillion dollar deal with uh, time Warner at the time. Yeah, right. right. And, when I'm hearing this announcement, I'm thinking, how how can they possibly have a 24 hour, 365 day a year <laughs> Laker chat? Like, are they going to replay the 85 finals like eight times a day? I'd be mean, right, right. Where's this content coming from? So I I had this germ of idea to to do a talk show where I sit down and talk to a Laker personality about their career through my photos. But yeah, it's on camera, and of course it's taped. But you know, it scared the hell out of me to be in front of the camera. I'd never done that before. And I had a producer who was so great, this woman, Marina, who said, Andy, just, you know, you've known James Worthy his whole career, you know, just sit down, make like you're in the living room or in the bar. Right. Or whatever. And I just forgot about the camera, basically, and had a conversation. Yeah. But um, it was so foreign to me that uh, I took to it, and then that led to the podcast, and now here we are, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's just an interesting sort of twist and turn. Like, you, you weren't looking for – this opportunity at ESPN came knocking on your door. Right. Right. And no, I was, I was happened? happy at the post. I, yeah. you know, I wasn't looking to leave. Yeah. Um, but you know, I wanted to be a columnist like everybody else. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. <laughs> and, and the three columnists at the time were all under 50. So I, you yeah. know, just doing the math and just, I figured, gosh, I'm going to be here another 10, 15 years before I ever even get considered for a column. Right. So right, is right. that, is that how I want to spend the next 10 or 15 years of my life? Kind yeah. of just, yeah. and then the TV thing, I just thought, you know, I should probably learn this. I should probably learn how to do this. Not yeah. because I thought I would make a career out of it, but just to have something else in your tool bag. Right. Like I just sure. thought, well, sure. I can write. I should learn how to be on TV, you know, yeah, and it was it, the wave of the future was what was. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so that's what pushed me to it. I, I mean, ESPN was it was big at the time, but it wasn't like it is now, like mm -hmm. this behemoth. I mean, it yeah. was a big channel, but it was one of a lot of big channels, you know, like, yeah. um, so I How didn't much? think of it as I'm going to ESPN, my career. I just thought, well, they offered, nobody else did. So why don't I go work with them? <laughs> How much training did they give you? Like they bring you in and like, or they just threw you in the fire, man. You're very like, little, light, and here you go. <laughs> I mean, not really all, all very much. I mean, you know, I remember the first time I wrote a yeah. script for, and it was actually, a, it was about the Lakers and Celtics rivalry. It was uh -huh. one of the first big feature stories I did yeah. for ESPN. And I, you know, I had kind of roughly sketched out the sound I wanted and the bites mm -hmm. I wanted and how I was going to do it and the stand-ups and everything. And I sent the script in and, and our coordinating producer, who was, you know, one of the big bosses, literally laughed. He started mm -hmm. laughing. And I said, "What? What's funny about this? This isn't supposed to be funny." And he goes, "It's not. It's not what you wrote." He said, "This is eight minutes. There's no way we're going to do eight minutes on this. Maybe we'll do three, but it's yeah. not going to be eight. You know, so yeah. Uh, yeah, you had to learn really quickly that you have to speak quick, fast, and 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 Mort gave me a great tip because I was I went to him and Gammons and I said, I, you know, how do you, how do you, you have information? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And and how do you 
disseminate it, you know? And he said, you really, if you think about it like a newspaper, you really only have time to give them the headline. Mm -hmm. You can't really give them the story. You have to yeah. just say, this happened today. And that's all the time, I have, you know, yeah. and, when I, and that was that helped me out a lot to kind of think of it that way and really kind of got me to, into the notion of, OK, I have to speak quickly. Yeah. yeah. Get my information out is very, very quickly for people yeah. to, to be able to absorb it. Yeah. And under fire, man, and under crazy conditions, of course. Right? Yeah. It's you know, yeah. Amazing. Especially when you're doing the sideline reporting stuff. And right. You know, and and I, had, I did that one that. my last year at ESPN. I did sideline. So that was yeah. the first time I'd ever done sideline. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I did it at pretty regular. I mean, at Turner, that was kind of one of my main jobs. Was oh, for sure. Sideline. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So, you know, one of the big fringe benefits of this job, of course, is relationships that you and I have made with each other but with so many people on yeah all sides of of the ball so to speak right behind the yeah. scenes in front of the scenes everything um so a number of years ago you and i had a fantastic wonderful opportunity to to help the nba um push along the uh autism awareness initiative oh uh, sure yeah. remember that i and do the game in washington dc um tim kane from the nba was yeah involved. Um, he has an autistic child. My sister um, has an autistic son. And you were so gracious that day. And and really, David, I mean, I don't think without your help, I don't think this this whole initiative really would have gotten the traction that it did because on national TV, you know, sort of broke that to the world. Yeah. Um, you know, I've given that a lot of thought. My sister and I have talked about it a lot. And now, of course, it's an initiative every every april it's you right. know autism not autism awareness day or week it's autism awareness month right <laughs> which yeah. is fantastic you know and and i don't know if you've given it a lot of thought over the years but you know myself my family and i'm sure tim speaks about it too that you know just super appreciative of the fact that that well, you, you were you. willing to take the time that day in that national nationally broadcast game to you know bring autism to the world through the nba which was amazing well, I appreciate it, Andy. It was, you know, I, I, you know, I felt, I don't know, you know, you feel strongly about it, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah. and I was, it was, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't even anything to think about, right? I mean, it was just like, if this can help people, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you do it? You know, yeah. like I have this platform, right? Um, I should, if this is helping people and, and helps families and, yeah. and kids, why wouldn't you do it? Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, that part was, that was the easy part to me. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't anything to even think about. It was something that was brought to me and I said, sure, why not? Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. it was great to, I think I actually met your sister. Was oh, she at sure. the game that Yeah. Night? You interviewed her. Um, yeah. At yeah. At, uh, it was either third quarter break or something. Right, right. And, and, and yeah, it was really amazing. I was thinking yeah. about her last yeah. month when when Olivia passed. I yeah. thought about her a lot, you know, yeah. and I was yeah. like, because yeah. that really made me sad. That yeah. really made me sad, you know, because it yeah. was a real memorable time in my life. I was 13 years old when I saw Greece, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I remembered vividly, you know, having a massive crush on Olivia Newton John, like everybody else did. Yeah, right? everybody loved it. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, yeah. So it was it was my pleasure. It yeah. wasn't well, at all a burden at all. It was I've been I've been wanting to to tell you that for a long time now uh, i have my know, platform i could tell you tell it to you all, but i will send my uh, send your regards to my sis and I yeah absolutely send them back. um so david let's get into this season okay and and sure. again this is not really my forte but i i i would be remiss if i didn't have you like on the other side of this camera and talking about um what's coming up i mean it it, it looks like it's going to shape up to be a pretty um interesting season with a, a lot of interesting storylines i mean the first thing i want to talk about really um and i know you've heard this before and a lot of people have and um i'm not going to get into like could this year's warriors beat like the 88 lakers or yeah. the, you know i yeah. don't care about that but this whole concept of dynasty thing you know yeah. um are we ready to label the warriors a dynasty i mean what has to, or what has to happen you know, it's funny because I, I, I know there's no like set definition of that word, right? Yeah, I mean, right. you just kind of argue it, I think, well, once a team has a certain amount of success. I don't know how you couldn't 
mm-hmm. label them a dynasty. Um, mm-hmm. They've won four championships. They've been in six finals, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, over the last, what was the first finals? Four, 15, I guess. So, yeah, the last so. Yeah. eight years, they've been in six finals. I mean, you know, That's pretty good. They've, they've been, and well, I mean, there's two things. They changed the way the game's played forever, but mm-hmm. they, they have beaten, you know, almost all of the top contending teams in their conference to, to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and look so, what they've overcome. Yeah, I would say they're a dynasty. Yeah. Sure. I mean, look what they over oh, has, have overcome. I mean, two years ago, they didn't even make the bubble. Right. That's right. If right. two top stars were out, uh, right. you know, and uh, that could have been a blessing in disguise, actually, because, you know, they, they were able to regroup. Clay, of course, a couple was of high able picks. To yeah. 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 Great picks. Absolutely. The organization from top to bottom, you know, starting with the ownership and, of course, Bob Myers and Steve and everybody. Yeah. Just, you know, top notch. Um, and uh, I'm wondering, in your opinion, OK, if you had to pick, if you had to pick one team in L.A. coming out on ahead of the other one, which one would you pick at this point? I don't think you're going to like my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it because I, I, I bleed purple. I bleed blue. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I think the Clippers are really good. Yeah. I think they're really good going yeah. into the season. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Assuming Kawhi is back and is healthy. Yeah. You know how good he is. He's, you know, he's a two-time finals MVP for a reason, right? Like yeah. he's that, he's one of the best players of his generation. Right. So you have him, you have, you have a chance and you add Paul George to that, you know, a healthy Paul George. I think we all know yeah. what we all thought the Clippers would be. They just haven't been healthy for the last couple of years. Yeah. And then they but got John they Wall like now. Who's healthy yeah. And they look really yeah. formidable. And I think adding John Wall is going to be huge for them. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. I knew John very well when he was here in DC mm-hmm. and John is a, basketball like he lives and breathes this stuff like he 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 watches everything you Mm. know he watches obviously watches the nba but he watches college he watches the WNBA. he watches high school basketball he watches everything Mm -hmm. you know so he's all in and Mm -hmm. if he's healthy he can help them like he's he's quite he's really good when he's healthy you know so for sure yeah yeah Yeah, i saw them for the first time the other night and and all those guys played First of all, Kawhi looks like he bulked up about 20 pounds just on wow. top. You know, the guy yeah, yeah. is massive now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think um, it would be interesting to see the Clippers uh, kind of go off into the sunset out of Crypto.com Arena into their new Intuit. The, dome, yeah, you know, yeah, right some, right. some element of success, you know. Yeah. Amazing. So I think they're the team. I think they're the I think they and Golden State. Mm-hmm. I would be shocked if one of them's not in the finals, you know, yeah. I mean, if they're on a collision course, because yeah. they're yeah. really, I mean, they're built for an extended playoff run. The one question I have about the Clippers is, is the, you know, they let Hart- Hartenstein left. He went to New York oh, and right. yes. I think mm-hmm. he really helped them last year. And yeah. I was kind of surprised they didn't go the kind of, you know, veteran free agent because there were guys out there and, and maybe not Blake because of mm-hmm. everything that transpired there, but there were lots of other guys. Yeah. So I thought they'd bring in a veteran, you know, center to back up Zubac, but they, you know, they decided to go the way they went. But that yeah, yeah. that's the only question I have, Andy. Otherwise, yeah. they are loaded yeah, <laughs> like in every position. So yeah, they're yeah. very good. And Ty's a great coach, as you know. Oh uh, yeah, I love the guy. Well, it should be interesting in the arena to see what happens. You know, we've all been salivating for a hallway series you know yeah yeah <laughs> we almost had it in the bubble um right right you remember right, right. clippers were up 3-1 on denver and then they blew right. it so right. that would have been a, a bubble hallway series i guess but <laughs> uh, any big surprises any any predictions like is zion gonna have you know a healthy breakout year is he i mean what do you think just one well thing. i hope so yeah. um you know you can never you know you know with injuries it, it's never sure. It's hard to predict. Um, mm-hmm. He seems to have, you know, gotten himself into great shape coming into the season, and you hope that yeah. that that translates. Because if he's a, if he's healthy, New Orleans goes to another level. You yes. know, they were already pretty good. I think mm-hmm. bring him, CJM was was a great pickup by them last year. Yeah, to, to complement Ingram, um, and, yeah. and now you add Zion to it. I mean, they become very difficult to guard. Yeah, very sure. difficult, right? So yeah, they're a fun um, team to watch too. Yeah, and they'll yes, exactly, and they'll push yeah. the ball and they'll get up 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 and down the court and throw lobs and stuff. And people, I think they're going to be very good. And I, and I hope Zion just for Zion, because he seems like, I don't know him that well, but every time I've talked to him, he seems like a very 
kind of personable young man and, and mm-hmm. wants to do well. And, yeah. just, you know, there's a lot been a lot of attention and pressure on him mm-hmm. from minute one, um, yeah. you know, yeah. because of the hype mm-hmm. when he was at Duke. So, yep. um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just hope for his sake that he has a good year. Yeah, I do too. Well, it should be a fun year. I'm glad we got to chat about that. The last yeah. thing I want to ask you, DA, is um, is if you could give me a memory or um, some kind of anecdote, uh, some snippet of of any remembrance you have of working with Kobe or being around Kobe, or, or oh, any wow. kind of you know something that stands out that maybe you haven't shared before or maybe didn't share with me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, there was a, there's a couple. There's a couple, Andy. One was yeah. in London um, mm-hmm. the day they got Dwight Howard actually in the train. <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> that well, the story broke that yeah. you know the Lakers had gotten Dwight Howard, made that massive trade to get him. Yeah, and we were covering the, the Olympic team, and and I I don't think it was Craig Miller, but somebody from USAB, and they're doing their job. I'm not, I wasn't angry with them at all. They yeah. just said, look, he's not going to talk about the trade. He's just not going to do it. You just yeah. forget it. Uh-huh. And, you know, one of the things that, one of the things that, that I like about reporting is that you can kind of make your own rules, right? <laughs> so, and, and be a little stubborn and obnoxious and, and, uh, you know, and all those things. Yeah. So I, I went, I sidled over to my producer because you know it was the preliminary rounds and so the u.s team was winning every game by 45 50 points and i can't even remember who they were playing that day yeah and i and i said you know if we leave it was the start of the third quarter i think i said you know if we leave now we can beat them back to the hotel (laughs) (laughs) And, and he was like he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And so we got, we got, we took the the subway, the, the what do they call it? Whatever they call it, the tube. tube. We took the tube back. We left the game at the start of the third quarter because they were up by a hundred or whatever it was. And we run, we get back to the hotel. We're set up so when the bus pulls up, he gets off the bus and we just are there, right? <laughs> yeah. And I said, "Look, I have got to get a comment from you about this trade." And he. You know what, Andy? He couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. He couldn't have been more accommodating. Yeah. He could he he gave us some great sound. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, and 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 talk to him about it. But the things that the things I remember from Kobe are really more not so much stories, mm-hmm. but just talking to him, just being in his, you know, talking to him about various things like that were going on in, in his life and, and, and just about what, how he sees the world and things like mm-hmm. that. And not, not for stories, but just talking like we're talking now, you yeah. know, just yeah. off to the side, yeah. you know, and, and you know how brilliant he was and smart and observant and, and all of those things. So, mm-hmm. and, and I, I must tell you, Andy, I really came to like Kobe at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he became so kind of introspective and really kind of understood that you know the relationship between reporter and 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 a star player is kind of weird and 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 we 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 all acknowledge that mm-hmm. um but he just was so i think thoughtful he became really thoughtful about himself and and the game and, and history and all those things and mm. we had some great conversations his last year or two in the league and yeah. and he really had changed a little bit i think yeah and, yeah. and maybe was more appreciative of his vulnerability right as yeah. an athlete like right. you get old in this minute you get old as yeah. an athlete not as a person but as an athlete yeah and yeah. and it's hard it's hard to deal with that kind of you know mortality of your career and and he really kind of had a grace about it that I really came to appreciate and enjoy. So I really like talking to him mm-hmm. about the yeah. end of his career and and how he saw things differently than he did when he was at his absolute best as a basketball player. Right. And it was yeah. just, I really, I would, and that's part of what was so just devastatingly sad was that I was like, God, I'm really looking forward to talking to Kobe about stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, like, and, and not even, stage. not basketball, just his sure. storytelling and the other things he was involved in. Cause I thought he, he, he was really kind of emerging yeah. as, a, you know, his, his life or his thought processes were emerging and, yeah. and changing. And I was really looking forward to those conversations with him. You know, yeah. he was nice enough 
to, you know, we had, I had his email. He was, he would, he would email me back on things from time to time. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, I was really looking forward to that. You know, I was really excited about that. That was going to be fun. Yeah, I I agree. And we were all cut short from that. Yeah. But the fact yeah. that, you know, we got to live in his orbit for those 20 years. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, he was so driven um, that I think you're right. By the last couple of years, definitely the last year, he he became he was able to just st- stand back and look at what he had accomplished and maybe right. think about, you know, maybe, you know, I was a little too, uh, you know, driven, tunnel visioned at at being yeah, but all the greatest ones are like that but you have to be you have yeah to be. i get it like yeah. nobody i don't begrudge him that at all he would yeah. never accomplish what he did if he hadn't been that driven you know yeah and, and, and this guy remembered everything i mean you <laughs> probably had conversations you know we're doing our book together and he, he would remember the exact play at the exact time where it was and then he'd yeah. look at me he goes you have that picture right <laughs> like, because he wanted to talk about it in the book and i'm like dude this was like the you know like the 90 92 whatever you know yeah. uh, not 92 i'm sorry the 2002 conference finals and how am i supposed to remember it but i right. we, we did the best we could but anyway oh so you just reminded me of something yeah. so kobe first came into the league out of high school yeah 96 so i was working at espn at the time and you know i i i didn't i knew i knew of him but i didn't you know in those days you didn't you couldn't see everybody you yeah. know in high school so yeah, I asked people, NBA scouts that I respected, like, what do you think of Kobe Bryant? And and they all said he's really talented. You know, I'm not sure he should come right to the NBA because he everybody knew well he could he was going to go to Duke, right? And everybody, yes, right. And so I went on TV and basically said, hey, Kobe, you know, everybody says I know you're great, but maybe you should have gone to college, you know, and just like, <laughs> um, yeah. So fast forward. 14 years <laughs> yeah and so i'm in la for a lakers game and he has one of his typical you know brilliant kobe games and and we had never meant this had never come up yeah and he scored 37 or whatever and it was great and so we're talking to him in the locker room after and getting sound and <clears throat> and he's talking and he's answering the question and then he stops and he goes should have gone to college, huh? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. That dude did not forget a thing, right? It's it's like the guidance counselor who told him that he would never make it as a basketball player, and and you know, thirty years later, he remembered that. Yeah, and, like, and, I, and I and I just started laughing. I was like, "You got me. Yes, you got me. You got yeah. me. I guess it's turned out okay for you." He kept, that, he kept that back in the vault, man. But that, right. that's was, just his motivation. That's yeah, another, it was just the delivery was so it. good. I had to acknowledge that the delivery was excellent. Oh, you know? that's, that's, yes. I love that story. I love it. <laughs> well, DA, we got to close out on that, man. That is, that is a great story. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, yeah, sure. Hey, while we're just on the topic quickly, um, have you re- read Mike Sealski's book called Rise about Kobe? Because um, <laughs> I have. <laughs> it's holding up the bike. Right okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I love that book. You know, yes, very good everything very about good. Kobe before I met him, and um, it was just amazing. Mike and I are going to be doing an event together, and yeah, yeah, no, it's a very friend. good book. Very yeah, good. terrific. Um, is there a book in your future that we should? God, read? I hope so, Andy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, keep I hope so. Posted. Yeah. No, I think that's probably what. My guess is that's probably what I'll wind up doing in the next few years. I really, there's a couple of things I really want to write about. All right. um, that I think are books. I don't think they're like long feature stories. When I, I did the oral history of David Stern when he retired in mm-hmm. 2014. And that really kind of, and I took it, that really was two years. It yeah. was two years of it, grabbing, interviewing people with at various times. And it wound up being something like 37, 38,000 words. I mean, it was yeah. some ridiculous amount of words. Yeah. And so I thought, well, this is about, you know, a third or a quarter of a book. Yeah. About a third of the way there. If you wanted to do this, you know, you should. Yeah. And, I, and I've, ever since I thought, gosh, I, I need to write a book. There's oh, a couple, a couple uh, of ideas I have that I really want to do. All of us who loved and worked for David and uh, we would absolutely, I would love that. I would be the first guy to buy that book. And then 
get you back on the podcast to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, D, absolutely. I wish you all the best, pleasure. man. I, I, uh, I know you're busy. The season's starting. The whole thing. I really appreciate you taking the time, really today. Oh, Andy, please. man, I'm, I'm just, I'm honored Thank you man. asked, and as you know, I'm, I'm big, always incredible admirer of your work. You, you Thank have you, done, and I sent you text when I said this is the greatest photo in the history of the NBA, the bird magic boxing out photos, the uh, best the best picture in the history of the league to me i think it's, Thank you. Thank it's you. everything that you need to know about basketball is in that picture uh, right i appreciate that man <laughs> thank you thank i appreciate that a lot and coming from you somebody i respect so much um but you know there's still uh still a few left in the yeah camp. right I, hope, and <laughs> I think you got some left in your tank so i think so too yeah keep doing what we do <laughs> absolutely man absolutely it was a pleasure pleasure um coming on and you know safe travels and, and i'm sure i'll see you this year and Yep. somewhere down the road so absolutely da take care to you. man uh, see all you right soon. man all right buddy you thank you <laughs> thanks david that was of really course. great you're Dude, a good man. My pleasure man appreciate Anytime. taking time i think we're going to release this next week because uh okay season's starting in the whole thing so right right right, right. the okay. links and all that stuff okay that'd be great that would all be right, great everything go with you though everything's good you know i'm starting season 42 which is uh is a 42. big number, man. I, 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 I was at the Lakers Showtime reunion a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, that looked like that was great fun. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it, it seemed like lifetimes ago. You know, it's like, yeah. Like, was I actually there then? Right, and, right. And then to be out there and see, like, Kareem taking sky hooks at 75 and oh Magic's God. leading the break. You know, it's not really a break. It's kind of like a, a gradual. Wow. Yeah, right. And, and Pat... <laughs> Pat Riley's out there, and it, it, oh it, man, that is awesome! I'm a, so it glad was a they did that. Beautiful gesture that that Magic and and Pat did for the yeah guys. So yeah, yeah. Well, enough time's gone by now. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> a couple of guys were still, you know, still weren't there, but uh, maybe right. lingering things. But yes, a lot of time has gone by, and they can appreciate what what they accomplished. How great I mean, they see guys were. like yeah. you know Chuck Nebit was there, you know, and Jim Brewer, and guys right. like. Fringe dudes when it when they were playing, yeah, uh, yeah, but the feeling part of it and it was it was wonderful. So anyway, I'm yeah. so glad they were able to do that. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Well, be well, my friend. And, All right, man. Uh, I'll see you. Always on good to see you. <laughs> and I will see you down the road, sir. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Okay. Man. All right, Andy. Yeah. Bye bye. Well, huge thanks to my buddy, David Aldridge, for taking the time to come on to the Legends of Sport podcast and talk with me and bring his story to all of you. You know, uh, we're both pretty busy this time of year with the NBA season starting. So what better time to have than DA to come onto the podcast. So thank you for that, my friend. I wish you the best of success this season. I know I'll be seeing you in the trenches somewhere along the way. And uh, everybody keep following David Aldridge at The Athletic. Um, man, he is just an incredible writer, incredible journalist, and so glad to call him my friend. Thank you, DA. So, folks, remember, you can find us on the iHeart app and online, as well as Apple and Spotify and your favorite podcast platform. Keep following us on Instagram at Legends of Sport, our Twitter at Legends underscore of Sport, our website, legendsofsport.net, and, of course, our YouTube and TikTok channels, Legends of Sport. My photography can be found on Instagram and Twitter at ADB Photo Inc. So excited about what uh, what's shaping up here for season six. So many great, great guests coming up. Keep coming back, folks. Keep telling all your friends, you know, rate us. Uh, do anything you can do to bring more people to the Legends of Sport platform because we are bringing great content to all of you. We'll be back next week with another great episode. Until then, stay safe and stay well.